Hi, I'm Reverend Tony, and I've got a spiritual challenge for you for the month of March on the theme of vulnerability. Are you up to the challenge? I've got a little twist to my spiritual challenge for you this month. The theme's vulnerability, and my challenge to you is to keep at least two minutes of complete silence every day for the month. Research shows that the brain requires at least two minutes minimum of silence to recharge, redirect itself, move on to a different task with its ultimate peak efficiency. Five minutes is even better, but minimum is two. Can you do that this month? Can you find two minutes to keep silent? A 2006 study published in the journal Heart found two minutes of silence to be more relaxing than listening to, quote, relaxing, unquote, music based on changes in blood pressure and blood circulation in the brain. Silence has been used in brain studies as a control to see if certain types of music are more relaxing, what noises are most disturbing, and what types of interruptions are the worst. And the control silence continually ends up being the most positive, beneficial thing they study. Although two minutes is the minimum amount of silence required to notice the things that these studies have focused on, five minutes begins to be enough to improve the functionality of the right superior colliculus. Consequently, the silence enhances our brain's ability to feel empathy and also to feel excitement. See the video description for links to these studies and links for more information. A bit fortuitous that our first real measurable snowfall of the year happened just as March is beginning. I wish it could have been done in December or January and we'd be on to spring now, but we've got a couple inches of snow here in Connecticut where I am. And one thing we know about snow is that there's a real science to how it muffles sound and helps the world around you be quiet. When light and fluffy snow accumulates on the ground, it acts pretty much as a commercial sound absorbing material does. It dampens sound waves. Snow is porous and other porous materials, foam, fiber, that type of thing, absorb sound well. I've put my glasses back on because the snow is reflecting the sun. I'm getting a little snow blind. Two minutes of silence doesn't sound like a long time. But keeping quiet is not something we do naturally really well, most of us. I'm not talking about being quiet in terms of like meditation or just resting. I'm talking about trying to get yourself away from noises and distractions not listening to music or doing anything else that makes sound. If you've got noise canceling headphones, might be a great way to use those. And just sit and be quiet for two minutes. When most people start a meditation practice, one of the things they notice is that it's very difficult to just sit and be quiet. It does not happen that you enter into a blissful, restful state automatically. What happens for most people when they first start being quiet, whether it's a meditation practice or just a practice of being quiet for a couple minutes, is that what starts rolling through your mind and your mind starts going down all these different trains of thought is that negative thoughts and feelings and emotions tend to come up first. And what many people find difficult about establishing a meditation practice is that the quiet and stillness allows the repressed thoughts and feelings that we don't like to deal with to bubble right up to the top. There's a reason that being in a sensory deprivation chamber can be very unnerving. Our bodies are designed to take sensory input, sight, sound, touch, taste, smell. And when all that's gone, it's like our consciousness is floating in a void. And it sounds cool and maybe space agey and science fictiony, but it's also very difficult for most of us to experience that. So practice by starting small, two minutes of silence every day. The science says it helps you reboot your brain, helps your brain change direction or task. 
And the more often you do it, the more it helps. Two minutes is the minimum for most people. Many people take five or more minutes, but try at least two and see if you notice a difference that way. What's being silent have to do with vulnerability? Well, if in the silence, that negative emotion and negative train of thought tends to surface for many people, what you're practicing is being vulnerable to yourself. Being vulnerable is being your true honest self to others in a healthy, emotionally connected way. It's not an easy thing to do. Maybe the place to start is with risking a little vulnerability with you. Can you be vulnerable to yourself and not judge yourself for your thoughts and feelings? To let them pop up, let them rise to the surface? Can you deal with the quiet of just being with yourself? Can you be open and vulnerable to who you really are for two minutes a day? Are you up to this challenge? I encourage you to try it. And if you can do the two minutes, shoot for five a day and see if you notice what a difference that makes. If you want to, yes, it's a good way to start a meditation practice, but it doesn't have to be that. It can just be trying to be quiet for a couple minutes. As always, I would love to hear how you've done with this challenge, so please leave a comment, be in touch, let me know. As usual, I'd appreciate it if you like the video and share it with others. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're alerted when the new videos are posted. If you're on Facebook, follow the page and remain in contact with me. Until next time. Go in peace and good luck with the challenge. If you enjoyed this month's spiritual challenge video, please like this video and share it with others. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, and please leave me a comment. I'd love to know what you think about this month's spiritual challenge. Check out my website and blog at TonyLorenzen.com for even more resources that will open your mind, touch your heart, and inspire your spirit.